Good day, class. Let us now continue solving the sample problems. For our second problem, we have here, a motorist is traveling at 90 kph when he observes a traffic light 250 meters ahead of him turns red. The traffic light is timed to stay, to stay red for 12 seconds. If the motorist wishes to pass the light without stopping, then we need to answer these two questions in which we will denote with variables later on. Before we start outlining the event required and solution format, let's set first the location of the reference at the position where the motorist is just 250 meters away from the traffic light that he, inten that he intends to pass. Also, let's set all vectors directed to the right as positive. So these are the given values. Initial velocity is positive 90 kph. Distance of the motorist from the traffic light is 250 meters. You may also denote distance by letter D, though some textbooks prefer letter S. So it depends on your preference. And we are also given this time interval for a motor to pass the traffic light without stopping. This problem requires us to solve for deceleration or acceleration that will allow the motorist to pass the traffic light at 12 seconds without stopping. And to solve for the corresponding final velocity or velocity at this final position. A positive sign is used for final position because we set vectors directed to the right as positive. Let's solve first the required acceleration. Since most of our given are in terms of the basic unit for length and time, which is meters and seconds respectively, we will start first by converting the unit of initial velocity into meters per second. So in this equation, 90 kph is multiplied by 1 r over 3600 seconds to cancel the unit r and replace with second. Similarly, this initial velocity is multiplied with 1000 meters over 1 kilometer to cancel kilometer and replace with meter. This gives us v sub 0 is equal to positive 25 meters per second. To solve for acceleration, we choose among the four kinematic formulas the most practical one to give us the answer. Among those formulas, we can use the third one. So from this equation, we can investigate that we have values to substitute for x, v sub 0, time, and x sub 0, leaving us only variable a to be solved. Take note that a while ago, we placed the reference at the initial position, which means x sub 0 is equal to 0. Substituting now the required values in the third kinematic equation, we now have positive 250 is equal to 0 plus 25 times 12 plus 1 half times acceleration times 12 squared. From this, we obtain that acceleration is equal to negative 0 0.6944 meters per second and that the negative sign indicates that the acceleration is directed opposite of the direction of motion of the motorist. In other words, the motorist is decelerating. You may review the previous lesson about the sign of acceleration to remind you that Deceleration does not always mean a negative acceleration. Next, let's solve for final velocity. Among the kinematic equations, it is the second one that is the most practical to use here. By just plugging in the values for V sub 0, acceleration and time, we get this equation. This gives us that final velocity is equal to 
positive 16.67 meters per second. Since the unit required is kph, we just convert it same as before by making sure that the resulting unit is kph. Finally, we obtain that final velocity is equal to positive 60 kph. So that's our answers for the second problem. Now, let's proceed with our third sample, sample problem. We have here a stone drop into a well with no initial velocity and 4.5 seconds later a splash is heard. If the velocity of sound is constant with a value of 330 meters per second, find the depth of the well up to the water level. Take note that in this problem, in order to get the depth of the well, we need to analyze two motions. One is the motion of the stone and the other is the motion of the sound. To avoid confusion in dealing with several variables later, Let's use this subscript where subscript ST represents the stone while subscript SD represents the sound. Also, let's place the reference at the initial position of the stone. So this will imply that the initial position of the stone is equal to zero. The first motion that we will analyze is the motion of stone followed by the motion of sound. As a guide, let's denote all vectors directed upward as positive. We are given here initial velocity of the stone is equal to zero and for the sound, a constant value of negative 330 meters per second. A negative sign is written based on our set convention. Also, we are given the total time that the splash was heard from the well after dropping the stone. To denote what is required, we just write the required depth as h, which is technically same with distance. We begin our solution by writing the implied given such as the acceleration of the stone, which is equal to acceleration due to gravity and that the total time of 4.5 seconds is also equal to the sum of the time taken by the stone and the sound to cover depth h. Later on, this equation will be very helpful to relate the two motions in order to get the value of h. So first, let's analyze the motion of stone. Remember, this motion is under the influence of gravity. Am among the kinematic equations, we will use the third one and revise it to suit our problem. Notice that variable y is used to denote the position because it is a common practice to use variable y <coughs> in expressing positions along vertical. Nevertheless, you may still use variable x. Notice also that we use the subscript st in the equation to differentiate it with other motion. The variable t sub st represents the time taken by the stone to, co to cover depth h. Since uh, we know already that the initial position of the stone is equal to zero, therefore by substitution, we now have this equation of its final position. Then by simplification, Final position is equal to negative 4.905 times t sub st raised to 2. This follows that the distance traveled by the stone or the depth of the well is equal to the absolute value of its final position or equivalently this expression. Thus, depth h is equal to 4.905 times t sub st raised to 2. And let's denote that as equation 1 for this solution. Next, let's analyze the motion of sound. 
since the velocity of sound is constant, we can use the first kinematic equation and express final position of sound equal to its initial position plus, plus its velocity times t sub sd or the time it takes for the sound to cover that pitch. Based on our figure, we can conclude that the final position of sound is equal to zero because it is located at our reference. So by substitution, we have zero equal to initial position of sound, which is located at the final position of the stone, plus negative 330 times T sub ST. Thus, its initial position is equal to 330 times T sub SD. Observe that for this motion, we are going to use the, uh, the initial position of, of the sound since this describes or it measures the depth H. So when you get the magnitude of the initial position of the of sound, then you can get the the magnitude as well of that pitch. Next, we express H to the absolute value of its initial position, which is the absolute value of 330 times T sub SD, giving us the second equation for H. Now that we have two equations for depth H, let us now equate them to get the, the third equation. Notice that this third equation has two unknowns. Therefore, we need one more equation with time variables to get their values. Uh, recall that earlier, we already take note of this equation to give us T sub SD is equal to 4.5 minus T sub SD. So now replacing T sub SD of equation 3 with this newly derived expression, we now have this equation. By distributing 330, we can simplify it as follows. This allows us to get this quadratic equation after rearranging the terms. So solving for T sub SD, ST, we, we get a value equal to negative 71.51 seconds, which is absurd. And also a value of 4.234 seconds, which is the correct value. Finally, we substitute 4.234 seconds to equation 1, giving us the final answer for depth H, which is equal to 87.93 meters. Please take note that although in this problem we analyze two different motion, this problem is still not considered as part of relative motion because the reference that we use all throughout the analysis remains stationary or not moving. The concepts and examples of relative motion will be covered in the next part of this lecture. So that's it for now. Thank you class and God bless.